Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today I thought I would do another What Sold video since you guys like that and it's been a while since I've been able to do one. And I have a bunch of solds from the last month. This month was around $4,000, which isn't my best by any means, but I'm actually surprised it's even 4,000 considering we had just a lot of hiccups this last month and I haven't been able to do as much work as I normally do. So I'm still grateful for every single sale that I get. And I do average 1,000 to 1,500, sometimes even $2,000 in sales per week. I'm gonna be going through a lot of things today. So grab a snack, grab a treat, a little drink, and relax while I go through a bunch of things that might sell for you too on eBay. Okay, so first up is this North Face Women's Parka. Anything that's North Face, quilted, insulated like this will sell for really good money. If you guys remember from a previous What Sold video, I had a men's quilted red jacket, puffer jacket, and that sold for $125. This sold for $150 plus $6 shipping. So anytime you see North Face, and parka, jacket, coat, insulated, quilted, all of those are very good things. It does take some time to look up exactly like what the name of the North Face product is. In this case, it was the Metropolis jacket but it's worth looking that up because some varieties go for a little bit more. And all you have to do to look up the style is just put in as many keywords as you can. Full zip, parka, insulated, go through Google Images and see which one matches yours and usually a Google image will come up of the item that you have that matches exactly. That's kind of how I do it. This one had a removable hood, it's full zip, it, it's longer, it's like a coat instead of a jacket. And so when I searched for those things, um, this pulled up. Something also to take note of is on the sleeve, usually right around here, on a North Face jacket or even Patagonia or some of these other high-end activewear brands, there is a number or some kind of logo. It can be like a 700, an 800, whatever. If you use that while you're looking up the style, 800 down jacket, quilted jacket, that's going to be a keyword that people are searching for because it just indicates the, I believe, the amount of fill in the jacket and how lightweight it is versus how insulated it is. So that's just something to keep in mind. Here's another Scentsy. As you guys might remember, over the summer, someone was liquidating all of their Scentsy. I picked everything up for $5 each, and they've slowly been selling over the course of the last few months. And then this one sold for $23 plus $10 shipping. Not that exciting, but I am down to my last few. I think I only have a couple more Scentsies. So I'm really glad that they've sold, and this still quadruple by money which is great so yeah I I love selling Scentsy and I've picked up many of them before and I'm always glad when they sell these are Banana Republic tuxedo stripe joggers Banana Republic doesn't usually sell that great for me but this is a newer style so anything that's more recent with Banana Republic will sell a little bit better than something that's older so just kind of keep that in mind it's not a regular thing that I normally grab but if it's newer season or if it's um, an especially expensive item then I will pick it up so these sold for $28 plus $6 shipping. This is another car part that I sold. This sold for $78 plus shipping. This is actually a really lightweight car part. All these grills that I have, I picked up at liquidation for $6 each. I still have a few in my garage. I'm probably, since it's been a couple years, going to go back and inventory them and maybe relist some of them. It's just been a long time. They're still selling consistently, but I would like the rest of them to go. So um, I'm considering doing that. But yeah, for those of you asking about the shipping, these are actually very light lightweight and very easy to ship. So um, this one actually shouldn't have been $5 shipping. It probably should have been around eight, but it only cost me $8 to ship. This I picked up from one of my Thrift With Me videos. This is a Magashoni, I hope I'm saying that right, New York 100% um, cashmere sweater. I hadn't heard of this brand before, but when I looked it up in the store, it looked like it had pretty good comps. And sure enough, it sold for $33 plus $6 shipping. And I was happy with that. Anytime you find 100% cashmere, I mean, it still matters the brand, but you're gonna be more likely to be able to sell that for more money. So definitely keep that in mind. If something's cashmere, it's worth looking up. This is a Marimekko New With Tags dress. This sold for $84 about plus $5 shipping. And Marimekko is a really high-end brand. This one actually had the tag still attached and it was originally $445. I think the reason it sold for a little bit less than maybe I wanted is because number one, it was missing the belt. And number two, it was a size zero, which is a really tiny size and a little bit harder to sell. Still, it only took a couple months to sell. I was happy with that. I did pick it up for around $20 at this yard sale. So I'm definitely happy with my return, but yeah, I, when it's a small designer size, it is gonna take a little bit longer to sell. That's just the fact of the matter. This is a Peter Millar 100% cashmere half zip pullover sweater. 
and this actually had a flaw it had a small hole in the front I think that's why it took a little while to sell and that's why it sold for a little bit less than what normally these go for but I pick things up with flaws all the time and if I can get them for the right price I have found that they will still sell someone believes that they can fix it or they don't mind the hole they can patch it or they can take it to get repaired they feel like they're getting a good deal and we kind of went all around so I picked this up for five dollars it sold for close to forty dollars plus five dollars shipping which totally made me happy it was a great return on my investment so I would say don't be afraid of selling things with flaws or imperfections um, they might still sell for you if the brand is right here's another example of that this is that cabbie embroidered velvet coat that I was talking about in one of my more recent thrift with me videos this one actually was missing two buttons and I didn't notice until I listed it and I was like dang it but even though it was missing two velvet buttons, it sold in just a couple weeks for $40 plus shipping. So I included that right in my title just so that the buyer knew and was fully aware. But they, again, they felt like they got a really good deal. I was able to sell this beautiful coat. It was not that expensive for me to buy and all around we all win, right? So um, again, if it's the right brand, if it's a really cool item, even if there's a flaw, it can still sell for you. These El Naturalista boots um, were actually kind of worn. They weren't in the best condition, but they still sold for $45 plus $10 shipping. Now that it's winter, boots or anything shearling, anything durable, waterproof, heavy duty, will sell decently well for me. And these were no exception, so I'm glad they're off to their new home. Um, I actually had not heard of this brand until I looked it up, so I was really happy that it did sell for me. These are some Sundance Catalog woven leather Addy slingback sandals, and these actually took a little while to sell. I was surprised because Sundance shoes usually sell a lot faster for me. Maybe I had them priced too high, I don't know. Sometimes that happens, but I was able to take a very reasonable offer, $25 plus $5 shipping. These actually cost $7 shipping. Again, I have shipping templates that I assign to anything that's coats, pants, shirts, jackets, whatever, and for whatever reason, this fell into a category where <laughs> It, the shipping amount assigned to it was $5, which was fine because again, I just ate the $2 cost extra fee. But yeah, these sold, I picked these up for I believe $5 a while ago and they sold for $25 plus $5 shipping. This I picked up almost a year ago. So <laughs> this is an Aether women's insulated jacket. It's full zip and I had not heard of Aether before. I believe I'm saying that right. But I looked it up and I didn't really find a lot of comps on eBay, but when I looked at aetherapparel.com, that's their website, a lot of their jackets are like $500 plus. So it's really high end. It's definitely a not as known brand, but I just knew if I had it priced right, it would sell eventually. And sure enough, it did. This sold for $100, it's like a parka, it's a long coat. It is fully insulated, it's really good quality. So I can see why these are expensive. The quality was really good. It's a very simple, heavy duty outerwear jacket. So I was happy that this sold for $100 plus $10 shipping. I picked it up for $7. This is a very simple J. Crew V-neck sweater. It's a front pocket tunic sweater. It is really soft and really kind of cute for this type of season. I like selling tunic style things, the looser fitting ones, because they fit a wider variety of people and they're a little bit more flattering. So um, they are an easier sell for me. This sold for $22.50 plus $6 shipping and I picked it up for $5. So again, not like the greatest return ever, but these J. Crew items are bread and butter for me. They sell pretty well. It's from a recent season and I just know that these will flip quickly and this one did. This hoodie was a fun find. This is a Nike embossed full zip black hoodie and it sold for $30 plus $6 shipping. I actually found this on a dollar thrift day so they had like all these items for a dollar and I found this jacket or this hoodie. It's like a sweater and yeah, it sold pretty well for me. So I'm really happy with that. Nike, it just depends. Like I'm a little more selective with what I pick up, but this looked really cool. It had the embossed kind of satiny floral design to it, which I thought was kind of cool. So I thought that it could sell for a little bit more and sure enough it did. This is that Ishakti women's dress that I pointed out to you guys um, that I picked up for my last thrift with me video. It was $3 at the thrift. It sold for $29 plus $5 shipping. Ishakti is a brand that sells pretty well for me. So I definitely recommend picking it up if you are ever out. It's like a boutique brand and every time I've had it, it's sold within a few weeks. So that's just something to keep in mind. It doesn't sell for a ton of money, but it's a consistent seller at around $30. Flying Monkey is a brand I've talked before about. It's 
kind of, I believe it's sold at Buckle and it's a very thin, stretchy type material. Um, more flattering, has more give, it's just a little more stretchy. These are cargo Rahem kind of cargo pants and they sold for $25 plus $6 shipping. This was another $2 denim day that I picked these up at. Flying Monkey sells pretty consistently for me at around $20, $25 or even $30. So not a lot of people talk about it and again I know like these $20, $30 sales aren't as exciting as the other ones but these keep my store going. I love selling lower dollar amounts because they flip quickly, I usually don't get returns on them and they bring traffic to my store for the higher dollar items. So I like having a whole mishmash and a whole mixture of price points in my store to draw all kinds of customers. These Rock Revival jeans sold for $45 plus $6 shipping. It's really easy to find out the style name of Rock Revival because it's right on the inner tag. These are the Stephanie boot. They're distressed. The hem was a little frayed from just wear. Didn't matter. They still sold for my full asking price. They are a size 30. The larger the size with Rock Revival, the better they sell and the more they sell for. So just keep that in mind. But yeah, another example of it had some wear. It was a little distressed, but it didn't matter. Someone still bought it. So don't be shy about dealing with a little bit of wear or a little bit of damage. It will still sell. These are the Nike Air Vapor Max shoes. They are women's. They sold for $70 plus $10 shipping and they sold very quickly. So anytime you find Vapor Max fly knits, men or women's, they sell really well. Not all Nike shoes are created equally, but if you find fly knits and that is the knitted material, it's usually pretty easy to identify once you've found one or two. Um, they'll sell for more for me. And Nike is really easy to look up. If you look on the inner label the of the, like, the tongue of the shoe, there is a number and that's the style number. It's usually, I believe, six numbers and then a dash and then three more numbers. That's the style number. And if you look that up and say in Google and put Nike and then those numbers, the style will pull up for you. And so that's what makes it really easy for Nike to know the exact style name so that when people are searching for it on eBay, yours can pull up. If I were just to put Nike black, white shoe, I don't think these would have sold as quickly. So it is worth looking up the style name for this particular type of shoe. And for a lot of the things you're selling, you're gonna to wanna to look up the style name because it really does help your item to move faster. These are Vince Camuto Tall Cadilla Riding Boots, and I thought they were really cute. I picked them up at the thrift for $6. Vince Camuto isn't a brand I pick up all the time, but when it comes to these riding boots, I looked up comps and they looked really good. So I thought it would be a nice flip, and sure enough, it was. They sold for $55, and I was really happy with that. So um, again, this is boot season, and these did sell recently. So anything that you have that's boots, overcoats, jackets, sweaters, this is the time to get them listed. These dance goes, I know I've said in the past that dance go isn't my favorite to pick up and it's really not. When they're just the very standard basic leather clogs that you know you recognize all the time with dance go, they don't sell as well for me. But if it's the dance go that has a more unique design, the Mary Janes, in this case the Laura Nubuck leather shoes, um, these sold for almost $50 plus $10 shipping. And these I picked up at another dollar sale day at a particular thrift store that I go to. So I was really excited about that um, and they sold for my full asking price. So again, really pleased with that sale. Dansko, I guess, like is not on my no-no list anymore as long as it's a unique and different style than just their very standard and basic clogs. These again are some Nike fly knits. They are the Air Max Thea Ultra. And again, the fly knit texture, you will recognize after a while once you get used to it. These sold overnight, so they sold really quickly for me. They're in really good condition and they sold for $55 plus $10 shipping. These North Face suede boots took a long time to sell, I believe a year. So I held on to these, but they sold finally for the right price to the right buyer. They sold for $45 plus $10 shipping. They're like moccasins and again, they sold during winter boot season. So I was really happy when I picked these up for $2 at a yard sale and they sold for close to 55. So I picked up this Volange sweater during my most recent Thrift With Me video that I did for you guys. And I, at the time, had looked up comps. It looked to be around $50. Sure enough, this sold for $50 plus shipping. So the comps were right on point. I was really happy with that. I picked this up for, I believe, three to $5. Now I can't remember, uh, maybe $6. And it was a nice flip for me. Any of these European vintage hand knit, hand woven with like a really cool clasp will sell pretty well. So definitely keep that in mind. 
And that's kind of why I like eBay is because I can sell all kinds of styles and varieties of things. I don't really care even what it is. If it'll sell for me, I will sell it. Okay, these are some UGG Adirondack boots. These sold overnight for $140 plus $10 shipping. They were in new condition with the sticker still attached. So I was really happy that these sold. I love selling UGG boots. They just sell great for me, especially these lace-up kinds, winter kinds, waterproof, anything like that. Again, this is boot season, this is winter. So these boots um, and things like it are definitely highly sought after. And then these Mary Janes, these Dansko Mary Janes, um, again, they're a different style than just the regular slip-on clogs that I was talking about. These also sold overnight for $55 plus $10 shipping. So definitely worth picking up Dansko if it's a more unique and different style than what we usually see. This is toner I bought from a yard sale. I bought actually four units of, not exactly the same one, four different units of toner from somebody for $5 each. And this one sold for $85 plus $10 shipping, which I was thrilled with. Toner can sell for a ton of money if it's the name brand. I don't think I'd pick up toner anymore unless it is specifically branded for the printer it is purchased for, like Canon, Brother, um, anything like that. The generic toner that does work with certain printers but isn't the name brand just doesn't sell as well for me. So that's something to keep in mind if it's a name brand toner. Even if it's expired, it will still sell. So please keep that in mind. Ink is black gold. It sells really well. Here's another grill that sold. This is, this fits a Ford Ranger and yeah, you guys, like I have so many of these and they've just consistently been selling for me. I am so glad I was able to pick them up. I think on my last calculation, I have sold close to 400 of these car parts and I picked them up for $6 each and they each have been selling on average for 70 to $90. So you can do the math. It's been a really good flip. Yes, it's taken a long time. It has taken up room in our garage, which isn't like the greatest thing ever, but for the money that it's been able to bring in and the consistency of sales and the knowledge I've gained about car parts by doing it, I'm extremely grateful. This is a Lululemon Sherpa hoodie. It's a full zip and the texture of it is just really soft like Sherpa wool. Um, and it sold for $37.50 plus $6 shipping. I actually thought this would sell for more. I wanted it to sell for more, but it's okay. I'm glad it still sold. And yeah, sometimes that happens. I believe I picked this up for $15. So it wasn't my greatest flip ever, but I wanted to get sales moving for the day. And so I think I took an offer that wasn't my favorite, but hey, it sold. It hasn't been returned. Someone I hope loves it and we can all move on with our lives, right? Okay, so this Paula's Choice skin cream, I picked up at a yard sale. Um, it was actually more of a flea market and someone was just giving away all this Paula's Choice. And I know Paula's Choice because I had heard someone talk about it on a podcast and promote it. And when I looked it up, it is a really expensive skincare line. I don't think it's super popular, but all of mine that I picked up of these, I picked these up for 50 cents each. I had eight of them. Four of them sold to this one person and then the rest sold shortly after. So totally a great flip for me. I love selling beauty when I can find it. It was brand new in the box and yeah, someone picked this up. I mean, it was $2 investment turned into $84. And then if you add up the rest, you know, that was over $100 with just a few dollars invested. So beauty items can be really awesome if they're sought after and if the price point is there. So definitely recommend doing that. Don't be afraid to sell outside of your niche. If you only sell clothes and shoes, don't be afraid to sell beauty or ink or anything else, car parts, anything that brings you in money. And side note here, I just, really, really strongly believe that when you're starting especially, don't pass up things that are money just because you're uncomfortable selling them. The more niches and the more brands you get comfortable with, the more knowledge you have, the more money you make. I mean, it's that simple. So I would recommend not honing in too much on one particular niche. Try to learn as many things as you can so that you can just make more money. It's that simple. Okay, this is a vintage Carhartt men's super heavy canvas jacket. This sold for $55 plus $10 shipping. It took a while to sell and it was big. So I did use all that $10 to ship it, but it's off to its new home. And again, it's coat season. I don't need to say that again, it's winter. So I'm really glad that this sold. Carhartt's a great brand. Um, definitely don't pass it up, especially if it is the heavy duty jackets or if it's vintage, those sell great. Okay, this is a really fun find. These are some Nike sample Zoom Waffle racers. 
Um, and they said 2010 NFL Combine inside them. So when I picked these up, I was like, I don't know what they are. I didn't do a ton of research on the spot, but I grabbed them because I thought they would be cool. And I did want to do more research on them. So I got back home and I put it on my Instagram and I said, hey, does anyone know anything about this? And my friend found online, I will link to his Instagram down below. He was able to tell me these were exclusive to Golden Tate. Um, that's his name. He is a wide receiver for the New York Giants, and these could have been the exact shoes he even wore to the NFL Combine, so that's really exciting. So his recommendation, my friends, was to price them a little high and see what kind of offers roll in and wait for the right buyer, because a fan of Golden Tate is gonna want them eventually. So sure enough, it took a while, but these did sell for $65 plus $10 shipping to the right buyer who absolutely loved them, and I'm really glad they went on to someone who can appreciate the history behind them. So again, huge thanks to my friend found online. He was able to identify these when I had no idea about them. So I have no recommendations there. Maybe just if you see something cool that your gut's telling you is worth something, grab it. I picked up this JH Design military like NASCAR jacket. It was new without tags and it's embroidered and really cool. And I picked up for $25. I actually picked up four of this style of jacket at a yard sale um, for $25 each. So I did pay up a little bit for them, but most of them has, have been selling for close to 100 or over $100. So that's been really great. I've just been waiting for the right buyer. And sure enough, the right buyer came along for this one. It sold for $90 plus $10 shipping. This is a Wyoming Traders men's buffalo leather vest. So it was new with tags. I looked up comps and comps seemed to be pretty good over $100. This sold for just $75 plus $10 shipping, but considering I didn't pay a lot for it, I was like, well, let's just let it go to its new home. So I did. Um, again, sometimes I have to let go of things for less than I want, but I'm willing to do that if it's gonna spur sales for the rest of the day. This is another item that took a little bit of time to sell, but they, even though there was a flaw, they still sold for really good money. So these sold for $38 plus $5 shipping. These are J. Crew like Aztec flats, and they were mismatched. One size was different than the other size. They're just a size apart, but they still sold for over $40, which I was really happy with. So if it's an in-demand brand or an in-demand style, I think it, even if they mismatch, especially like designer shoes, they can still sell really well. I picked up these Corkies um, for $20. So this is an example of a time when I thought they would sell for more than they did, but they sold for $45 plus $10 shipping. I still made a little bit of money, but they were listed for a long time before they finally sold. So I don't know if it's just the style or it just didn't speak to people, um, but they sat for a while until they finally sold. I'm glad they sold. I still made some profit, but this is just an example of when I paid a little more than I probably should have. Here's another car part that sold. It's for an Ultima Coupe. It sold for $52.50 plus $5 shipping. And again, I bought these for $6 a piece. I made a huge investment two years ago and slowly but surely it has paid off in dividends. So I'm glad I wasn't afraid of that buy. It taught me a lot. I picked up these Marc Jacobs flats for $5. They sold for $35 plus $10 shipping. I thought they were really cute. I was actually kind of hoping they would sell for more than this, but, and if they fit me, I would have kept them for sure. But they still sold. I'm glad about that. And considering they were only $5, I was happy to see them go for $45. These J.Crew pants are called paper bag pants when they have that big tie at the top and they're kind of cropped wide leg trousers. These are super in right now. I picked these up for $5 at a yard sale. They sold for $45 plus $6 shipping. So anytime you find this style of pant, especially J.Crew, grab it because it's very in style right now. Okay, you guys might remember this from an older video that I did. I modeled this dress even. I know, so embarrassing, whatever. I modeled this very vintage gunny sack dress. It was really a joke. I put it on as a joke and I told my husband to take a picture of it because I thought it was hilarious. It looks like a pioneer dress. I looked like Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman, but it sold for $120 plus $5 shipping and I only paid 50 cents for it. So I did expect to get closer to $200 for it. That was probably a little bit reaching, but I was really happy with the sale and I hope the person loves it who bought it. Definitely do not pass up vintage gunny sacks. That's all I'll say about that. This is an ASOS embellished 
beaded dress. I thought this was so pretty when I picked it up. Even all the beads were still attached. So that was another huge bonus. I picked it up for $5. It sold for $50 plus $5 shipping and it hasn't been returned. So I hope the new buyer absolutely loves it. I thought it was really pretty. And if it was my size, I might've even kept it. All right, you guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate every single one of you. Hopefully you were able to take some notes, write down some of these brands that have sold well for me. And I'm glad I can pass them along to you. And hopefully you find them when you're out hunting in the wild and building up your eBay store because I'm just incredibly grateful for what I do. It allows me to be home with my boys while making a pretty decent income from home. I never have to depend on someone else for a paycheck and I will never ever take that for granted. As hard as I work is as much as I'll earn and that's just always gonna be the way I prefer doing things. So I hope you can too. If that's where you're at and you don't wanna work for somebody else, please know that this is an option for you. You can get a great income if you're willing to put in the work with eBay. So this Thanksgiving week, I wanna express my gratitude to every single one of you for following, subscribing, and liking my videos. It means the world to me and that I carry with me in my heart every single day. So thank you so much. And as always, you guys, until next time, take care.